This is a Pinball News production. Uh, welcome. I'll do this in English because we have some international guests. Uh, we have Jack. And um, yeah, enjoy. Um, thanks for coming. Um, so it's going to be about Jersey Jack art from the Netherlands. Um, I changed, I put, picked that title because I want to explain that I, you know, I started by myself. Um, and Greg, uh, when he worked for Jersey Jack, he uh, got me into Jersey Jack football. So I started uh, from my house on the on the, uh, on the attic, uh, working and trying to, and. and trying to figure out how to send my animations to to uh, to America and it worked because there you see Jack he, he received my animation so that's uh, that's how we worked back then um, in the meantime I've created 10 games for Jersey Jack so it's a it's quite a milestone <laughs> so I worked on uh, all the games uh, Elton John um, was le uh, uh, so this is Olaf. Sorry, I, I forgot to introduce oh, Olaf. So, <laughs> who's, who's that guy? <laughs> so Olaf is the lead animator on uh, Elton John, um, but eventually I also uh, worked on that title. Um, more on that later. So I started with mostly LCD animations. That's how I got into Jersey Jack Pinball. But uh, soon, in the second game, I got to be also licensed or contact for getting approvals, sending in animations, getting approvals, being you know, the first person is easier because you don't have to go to another person who has to submit your work and then get the feedback through that person back. Then I started creating printed art for uh, Hobbit, prepare art for printing on other games where artists uh, worked on. Uh, I also did marketing flyers, banners, flowcharts for almost every game, uh, social media website assets, video assets for release trailers and artist direction in the end. So I upgraded to this office in uh, Miami. Uh, this is where I work now. And there you see Greg is still peeking over my shoulder. Uh, so I can, so I cannot do that all by myself. All that stuff is just too much work with the, the time frame we work in now. Back then we had like three, two years, one year, and now we are making, trying to make two games a year. Um, so I need help. And I got help from Johnny Weigel. Uh, uh, I know him from the broadcasting company I work for, SBSS. Uh, he helped me on Wizard of Oz creating the model for this uh, for this uh, hourglass, for instance, but he also helped on the intro title of the uh, Hobbit uh, pinball machine. And so he was, uh, so, so just saying that I didn't do everything by myself, but I, I think it's safe to say that I did 75% of all animations in, in most of the games except Elton. Uh, he helped modeling uh, buildings for Dialed In. Uh, this is a sketch from John Yossi, which we got, and I was like, uh, I cannot do that all by myself. I need a modeler. So Johnny was able to help, and I compiled the city. I uh, uh, textured it, and eventually created the city um, for this game. And Johnny also helped on Toy Story 4. He, we got Pixar uh, stills. And I, I needed those, uh, we needed those models to, to actually rotate and they didn't provide the actual uh, models for this, so Johnny helped uh, modeling this. And then another artist, he is from, he lives now in Eindhoven, so it's not so far. Uh, Jasper is here. I got in contact with Jasper for uh, Pirates, and when I, while I was working on Pirates, I needed, uh, I was looking for an artist to do this uh, this uh, hand-drawn feel for the UI, and I found him online, um, and it, apparently he, he lived very close, 
uh, and apparently he applied for an internship earlier, and, um, but I didn't have any space for that. So, um, and funny enough, later on, uh, and so after that project, I said to yes, well, yeah, if you ever look for an internship, uh, let me know. So he got, uh, uh, during, uh, while I was working on Guns N' Roses, uh, he got in uh, as an intern, and he worked a year with me. And so he did the Coma concept, um, uh, animation, uh, the, uh, pre visits um, then while we were uh, working on that, or I think it was like pretty early on, he told me, "Yeah, yeah I have this um, this uh, poster I I drew, and I won this uh, art contest, and it was a worldwide art contest. So this is what he created, and is now used on uh, on the DVDs, right, for Blu-rays on uh, worldwide. Um, so I was like, so what do you think? Do you want to maybe try to do uh, the a backlash, a backlash for Guns N' Roses. So he started, he uh, ended up doing the a CE backlash. Uh, so here you see some of his first uh, mock-ups with the images we got from the uh, official assets. And then he started drawing. I rendered uh, the 3D model so we could draw over it. Um, he did the inner art plates as well with nice details of the uh, coma area where the, the crowd has the face mask. Funny enough, this was just before COVID. Um, <laughs> and actually, uh, during the internship, uh, COVID started, and um, uh, yes, we uh, couldn't, we didn't travel that much anymore. Um, and actually, this game, I, I didn't, I didn't go to Chicago at all. So this game is fully de uh, developed from, from, uh, at least I, I didn't see it before it was finished in person. Then he also uh, took Dane's artwork and made it more uh, painterly style. And this is the, the, the end wizard mode. This is uh, conceptualized. And, and actually, we anim and Jasper rigged those for animation, and I, I animated those for the final wizard mode. So then we knew what he could do. And he ended up doing the, the playfield art for uh, Godfather. And so here you see the stages of. Uh, how that goes. And so here is a template which I create for him, uh, so he knows where the inserts go and where uh, the holes are in the game. And um, it's, a, it's a collaborative project because I mainly did the inserts. He had a, uh, he had a, he's more of a, you're more of a uh, artist, I like painterly style. And, and inserts are more graphic style, so um, we combined our projects uh, until well, you know, we got to the end result of what we have here. Then we got to Olaf. And Olaf, I also know from my uh, work in, in, in television, and so um, for Wonka, um, we, I needed 3D animated characters, and so I asked Olaf, and um, he and uh, yeah, you did all these uh, yeah. the, the Wonka of the Oompa Loompas. Yeah. So uh, that's where our his his pinball career started. Um, uh, multiple, no, sorry, Exaval animation. And uh, here's some some tests of uh, <laughs> face rigging, so you can record your face and then I can see it and. Uh, so it's, it's funny that your, the technology nowadays is that you can do this pretty much in your, yeah, by yourself and not uh, 10, 20 years ago it was impossible. So all of had a lot of fun with some uh, clumsy Oompa Loompas as well. And he would, uh, you know, send me the, these animations on Friday like heaven. Your <laughs> time. <laughs> so, and then there is more people uh, which I want to Bring up. Um, so Rich, uh, Richard, Richard Benning, he did the background the painting for uh, Dalian City. Uh, I also wasn't able to do that by myself. Um, so yeah, you got to find the right people to do uh, you know, to combine it uh, together. Then uh, Rick Hude, he's a 
He's a great uh, 3D artist, also known from my uh, television work. He worked at SPSS as well, so he worked on uh, 3D models for um, pirates and some first uh, passes for the uh, multiple. So these are, I'm actually showing a lot of uh, making off, not the, the final stuff you can see in, you know, in the games itself. So I just like to, see, to show uh, making off and, and, and rejected uh, stuff. Then my brother Jerome, he did a lot of pre-editing work in The Hobbit. He took out all the characters in Pirates of the Caribbean, so we uh, now only see islands and, and uh, no characters in, <laughs> in the game. He did a great job on editing and uh, voice, uh, 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 lip-syncing Axel and, uh, to, to the studio recordings. Um, and on Elton John, he uh, edited uh, the, the topper uh, concert footage which we were not able to lip-sync because Elton John didn't want his studio, early studio recordings lip-sync to this old character, uh, Elton John. Uh, then Nova, my daughter, my oldest daughter, also got into editing and she did the pre-editing for Godfather and Avatar. <laughs> um, and she made an appearance in, in, uh, in Dial In. So John Yancey drew that logo I wanted to animate it, record it with her eye, and she's in the game. <laughs> so now we have just Jack Pinball in the panels. <laughs> what do you think, Jack? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Good. All right, so now we're uh, to uh, Elton John. Uh, we're going to talk about Elton John and Avatar. Um, Elton John wasn't so, wasn't particularly my favorite theme to work on. I didn't, you know, never had anything with Elton John. So I was like, well, why don't I find another animator and I can focus on avatars, maybe sit back a bit, help hold up and relax. Because, you know, it's a lot of con and working on all projects is your con constant, uh, you have to be creative and, um, and as you can see, it's a lot of work. Um, but the games are also getting closer and closer together, so you cannot do it all. So you've got to find people who can pick up this project. And Ola did a great job. Um, and yeah, and my, and my background was also freelancing for a long time. Uh, and I did a lot of work for Disney. Uh, and on Disney Channel, you see a lot of bright colors, you know, uh, nice, uh, fresh color combinations. And it, you know, turned out that worked really well with Elton John. So I, you know, it, I, I felt already good with the theme, you know. So the the type that, you know, the, the person he is with all the clothing and all the shoes and and glasses. And I've seen a lot of shoes and glasses and and, and, and outfits. We will see later on. It it really suits me. So uh, yeah, it was uh, it was a nice, uh, really great that uh, that he uh, uh, called me and uh, that we. Uh, Started. Yeah, actually, I called Olaf. So I was looking for someone to do it, and I thought Olaf was uh, taken up too much with his own project. Uh, he was always booked as well. So yeah. I was like, well, do you know someone who can do what I do? And, and Olaf said, well, I'm actually interested in doing that. So that was great to hear because, um, yeah, uh, I think that's a bad, yeah, it's bad. <laughs> it was a better find than someone you don't know. And, uh, so, yeah, and it did really well. Um, and, and actually, this, we didn't animate this. This is what I wanted to tell about this, is that like the Guns N' Roses logo, we were able to create our own uh, Elton logo, because I, and so we did a pinball uh, style of that uh, E, which is this modern uh, Elton logo he uh, uses. And on the tour, he, you know, he created that uh, E in, several different styles, so we were allowed to create our pinball style logo for this. Um, so, <coughs> Olaf had to create his first uh, UI, um, and yeah. Yeah, it's a really rough uh, sketch, but the, the first is that there are some rules already being made by the, by the developers uh, based on a white wood, so it's very rough at that stage, and they start playing it, and and think about what kind of rules could we apply to this theme and then it turns out well let's do something with the crocodile and maybe we can do something with rocket man uh, maybe it's a rocket man multiball so yeah then it's it starts very rough 
uh, in, in the first uh, approach, uh, first sketches, and that evolves into a more uh, defined uh, design. So yeah, here it's a little bit more like, hey, you know, we need we need more more text here, more more things to show. Uh, yeah, these are these, these are typical uh, sketches I yeah. think in uh, Illustrator, uh, um, and then you were so you also had to you know figure out how it all you know how we start. So I I yeah. set up like maybe it's this shape. We have this star. The star is. What Elton and we have all these inserts. Star is the the shape he, he wanted to, you know. It, 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 it's, it, it's his brand, it's, yeah, basically. It's part of his brand. Yeah, so yeah. Not that you can license as a star, but no, anyway. no. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, so we ended up having this star shaped, uh, this, yeah, UI. Um, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Maybe the next picture. Now, now it's you know getting more into the. Into the UI, we, we 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 know, you know, it looks familiar. So one thing uh, is the score. That's an important thing. So how does that look? Uh, you know, what kind of feel does that have? So I thought, you know, it's, it needs to be a lot of glitter in there. That's moving. It's an animated glitter. Maybe we can apply that on the on the letters and even apply gradient on top of that. So. Uh, you know, and then it also needs to be moving uh, up and down. So yeah, there's a lot happening, but I think that is that makes it interesting. And and while designing this, I thought, hey, maybe if you have a high high score, then it turns into gold. You know, and so that that was one one thing um, I started with. Uh, and then I said, well, Olaf, don't go on too far. <laughs> don't go too far. I, I need to talk to the programmer. <laughs> <laughs> it's possible. No, but that, that, that we had a weekly call, and it's really nice to, to have a, such an, um, an, a legend in the, in the business of, um, of UI to, you know, to talk to, and, uh, you know, because all the pitfalls, you, you were known, uh, you know them. Uh, so, and, and it was a great, great talk, and, you know, um, uh, pushing things, a little bit pushed back, but, you know, it, it was a lot of freedom, you gave me a lot of freedom to develop things and, uh, and yeah, try yeah, things. Absolutely, you bring a lot of new ideas, which is also, uh, you know, refreshing for me. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And at the top you see the, the piano, uh, that is also an important thing in the, in the game. <laughs> And yeah, this is um, what we do then is uh, we focus on one rule, so that's purely the top part and I, I started to create all the elements. So first it's nice to have this piano turns into the stage, then all the, the multiple locks and then when you have this multiple you go into a multiple intro of that year and you know this is uh, the signature stage and you know now is the, the multiple running and then Elton is there behind his piano uh, and uh, if that is done then I'm going to make it for um, multiple stages so it's you know that's what I did and I made multiple multiple uh, stages so that is so great in uh, working for uh, just yet it's, uh, there's so much detail that we can put into the game and uh, you know, that's what I love to do as well, you know, all those jokes and the small details and things because people are having them at home, you play them a lot and you see each and every time you see different detail and we are allowed to do that, so that is really, really nice and it's also fulfilling to, to work on these, uh, these, these things. Mm -hmm. So I had a lot of fun uh, creating that and, and this, is, this is just one element and you know, uh, there are more corners to fill, so it was a lot of work uh, to do. Yeah. Another thing uh, is creating um, assets, 3D assets. Uh, here are some glasses, shoes, and, and a rocket. This, those were the first first things to create. That is also an early stage. Like, hey, we maybe we, we can always uh, use some glasses. We can always use some shoes. Uh, th those iconic shoes and all that hat, iconic hat. We we can use that in the game, and later on it turned out uh, to be a, a rule, um, and that's maybe nice. So it, it, it was useful to research everything. Uh, so for each song in the in the game, there are other things you can collect. Uh, so in this case, for Levon, uh, you have this leather jacket with the leather shoes and this funky uh, glasses. 
So um, uh, I researched all things, and it was in, also in collaboration with JP because sometimes he found something online or in the, in the, in the you know. Yeah, 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 you started with this, and, hey, you, this is fun. and then you look for uh, yeah specific items that are also known for uh, those songs. Um, now the feedback from we got back from the licensor uh, from Elton uh, himself or his husband was um, they wanted to also and so we mostly yeah. looked for, because the, the songs are mostly his old hits uh, his old wardrobe but they wanted to get the modern wardrobe in as well so that was sort of our um, uh, in, in, Research yeah. was uh, sort of we had to change it a bit around, and they wanted um, yeah some some shoes another place. Not that anyone in the end uh, sees that or cares, but we care <laughs> during development because you, you had a call uh, every two weeks, right, yeah. with them, yeah. and then uh, you know I, I, I prepared or we prepare together uh, stuff that we can present, and then it's it's just a talk, and you get feedback and feeling if we were heading in towards the right direction yep. and take it from there. Yep. So, um, yeah, so our color, so here you see all the, the first batch of shoes and <laughs> maybe yeah, we can go through it because uh, it's, it's, it's nice. Okay, shoe, oh, yeah. Sales, shoe salesman. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that is the thing. Uh, if, if we just cut this out and you, you place it in Photoshop, we can show it as a picture. But you know, it's much nicer if it's can if it can be rotated and can be you know nicely be there on the UI. So those things, if you collect them, then there are flying elements on top of the UI, and you see the much how much detail that there is into uh, such things. You know, you see the the light and yeah, we we could go all the way with it. Um, and, you know, and I thought maybe it's nice to put it uh, here uh, so you have more time to see it because in, I think in the game it's four seconds and then it's gone. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, you, you, uh, you do five. see it. So once you've collected an item, yeah. we, you know, we can oh, yeah, 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 with yeah, the idea yeah. it, it keeps uh, coming flying at you. Yeah. And, and if you collect the two items, you know, it, it alternates and then on the third item they all fly through the screen. So. It's, uh, it's pretty cool to, to, to the better you play, the, the more your, your screen gets filled in with the Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a continuous loop that it's, it's coming towards you. Yeah. So, yeah, this is how you collect an item. Yeah, this was your first, yeah. your previous. Uh, oh, yeah. 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 Correct. <coughs> yeah, just a previous of hey, how that could work with a couple of uh, shoes. And then we, um, we change that. It's more uh, into turn into gold and other other kinds of backgrounds. So uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. That, so then I was um, so I was I was so I was guiding Olaf with the whole animation process, and I wasn't really um, so. Uh, Steve was working with uh, uh, John Yancey and Christopher Franchi on the artwork. Um, uh, but at one time, I got a uh, uh, Jack called me and asked, "Hey, can you help out with um, with the art direction? Because um, can you take a look?" And uh, so I ended up being art director on this game. <laughs> anyway, uh, anyway um, so I with the game I wanted to pass on got, got to be uh, yeah my uh, art director uh, project. Um, so here again, uh, it's um, it's a template for uh, for uh, Frenchie because he did the uh, playfield art to uh, to work on uh, with all the plastics in, in place, so um, you know, we can start working. Um, so this is his. Uh, uh, this is in, in in progress, so you can see some elements that have changed. Um, if you know the game, uh, good enough. Uh, and so I also take, uh, so here you see a picture of the whitewood uh, I took and then uh, I photoshop all the art that comes in, I photoshop it on that whitewood. So besides that, there's not an image of, the, of, of a completed game, it's the photoshopped uh, version. So we can present it to the license, but it also helps the artist to, uh, to see uh, if if certain elements are uh, covered by or obstructed by plastics, like this target bank here, uh, do you want to put important art 
on the back of it or not. So this helps uh, visualize that certain uh, yeah the loop shots behind the piano. You you don't see the art at all. So um, why focus too much? On it? So then um, yeah, I'll see. Um, um, so I helped you obviously with the uh, cabinet uh, art. I took a good look at the, um, the style guide. So Frenchy did this thing on, um, on the cabinet, and it's, uh, it's a great, great Frenchy cabinet. Um, I helped out the Yaosi on the uh, CE, uh, with, which ended up to be the CE package. Um, and this is one of the first um, uh, layouts I created. So John had already created that image of, uh, of uh, Elton, and I gave him up with the idea, what if, if we have these rays shooting out of the, uh, so, uh, sorry, I, so I saw that purple and the gold, I wanted to combine that. Um, and and uh, so I started using Olaf's 3D renders on the cabinet, so that also came together, like the, the, the gameplay on the screen, uh, you see that on my cabinet as well, so I wanted to create uh, Elton on uh, flying in his own universe. And then you can see I first had him uh, this way, um, and I, uh, it ended up the other way. Because it's kind of weird if someone is behind the machine and he is flying like that. Um, so, um, ended up being this, <coughs> um, which I'm actually pretty proud of. Um, I really like how the, the burst, from, I'm not sure if I've seen that in, in pinball art before, that there is like this burst from coming from the flipper button, and it really gives this, uh, this power. Um, so this is one of the first mock-ups for the, for the back glass. And we used, uh, Steve was very, uh, uh, he was, he, Steve came up with this, this uh, logo with the, the, the bulbs, which we see on the play field, but uh, I, I didn't. I didn't think it worked on the on the uh, on the backlash, so we changed that to uh, something else. Um, and then here's a, an, another uh, version looking for uh, armor colors. And here's you, you see why we went for the gold and not the purple. <laughs> Um, so we also helped, um, and Olaf also helped with the, the color guiding uh, of the sculpts. Um, so we get uh, the sculpts and then we uh, rendered those in the colors we think we would uh, paint it. And then the painter in Chicago uh, got those models to, to uh, the, uh, the office and then it's sent to uh, the, 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 the the production, and, um, and then we get it back uh, like uh, like we wanted. <laughs> um, so that's uh, the Elton part. Um, uh, and this, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm, I, I thought about something I maybe wanna, wanted to, uh, to talk about, but Avatar. Avatar, um, so here's uh, the first uh, Whitewoods. Uh, by Mark Seiden, first, uh, his first design. He was a homebrew designer, uh, just Jack Hyden, and his first game was Avatar. Uh, so you can see some stages, um, and what I thought was really cool when I first shot this white wood was the, the underwater scenes, uh, the, the <coughs> lower level play fields, because it really fits with the water theme, and um, yeah, it's uh, something different. It's a different layout, um, and um, so it's it's uh, and, and it's a great license. It's absolutely a license I love much more. So you can really get into that more. Although I must say, you know, I, once you get into the Elton world, you also start to understand uh, stand it, and, and you you know what you saw. Yeah, you ended up you end up being. <laughs> the artist for the uh, collector's edition so um, yeah you just want to do your you know, you just want to do your best and um, so for this art uh, for this project no Dutch artist this is uh, for, uh, Leah Pasky uh, first uh, female artist in 30 years in pinball uh, um, Mark Seiden himself found her online uh, approached her and uh, she is a artist for uh, Blizzard, 
uh, she is an artist for Artstone, if anyone knows that game. Um, she's the art director there, and she, uh, you know, she, she uh, accepted our project and um, started sketching. And these are the sketches we sent, you know, we, you sent in the first pass to Lightstorm and Disney, and um, you get your approvals or not, or changes. Um, and you don't want to go too far because if you get re any rejections, you got to start over again. So uh, there's a, a rejected side piece. We haven't, uh, you know, that didn't end up in the game. We didn't end up with these three characters in the center. But here is a piece that uh, that uh, ended up being the uh, CE. Uh, we re removed the logo from the from the cabinet, and so the second pass is a color pass. Where you you know get first approval is this the direction is are these colors good can we move forward with this and then you say yes and then you can finalize your uh, art piece and you know she has her she has a great style uh, something totally different than than what we see uh, on other uh, games uh, nowadays so uh, we're very happy with this package uh, here you see another uh, three steps. To uh, final, uh, and there and 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 uh, the lightstone was really precise in all the details, like uh, the the their uh, bioluminescence dots on their faces had to be exact. It's, and they, so we had calls with them, and then it was asked, like, uh, did you check uh, if all the dots were correct? <laughs> There's someone there checking all the dots. <laughs> 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 That's a job. Um, so here's uh, another color rough. Uh, she did the, the inner art blades, uh, which are the same on both games. Um, but uh, the LE has one UV layer and the CE has three UV layers, three different colors. Um, here's the rough on the play field. And she did really well on this. I didn't really have to. So, uh, uh, Playfield is the toughest part to create uh, art-wise. Uh, you have to work around inserts, and she she did this over. Yeah, I, I I can't remember that I briefed her on this. I think Mark briefed uh, briefed the playfield before I I got involved in this. So uh, really, really great job on this. Um, so here you see how we previous. So this is a previous of the, the UV inks. Um, the all the separate layer and yeah we got a lot of reference footage because it had to uh, you know be like the movie itself so they had uh, many assets of plants and reference uh, but also a reference of the, the animal and this uh, I heard this at Expo I forgot about that story um, this uh, the, the Turok and this, this is the, the big beast uh, Jack uh, rides at the end of the first movie he was in the, in the movies. He wasn't seen in the dark. So, um, but we had to apply the uh, UV uh, patterns on it. Um, so they had they had to look up. Yeah, somewhere um, uh, you have, we have a rendering of it, but it wasn't used in the movies. So, um, yeah, there again it had to match. But then you see, also see we only have, we cannot do these gradients in UV like the tips of the wings. So you have to choose. Okay, this is going to be just blue or a red, or a, and then. I think, yeah, no, this is the CE panel because we also have greens. Uh, here again, a uh, photo of the uh, prototype um, and a Photoshop version of the prototype to present. You can see in the, uh, here I, uh, for the licensor, I put uh, like type in like, this is a prototype sculpt, it's not painted yet, so they can see, okay, this is not finished um, prototype brand. But, uh, you know, Along the way, you keep adding stuff and updating stuff uh, until it uh, looks like the, the final. The, it, does it sound better? Yeah, sounds pretty good. <laughs> um, so here is different uh, uh, yeah, uh, renders of different armor colors which you could pick. Um, it's kind of obvious that the blue and the green don't work, and we had uh, we also. Mark Seiden, the designer, wanted an orange because he thought it matched uh, the, the big um, uh, uh, banshee. Um, 
and but uh, Lightstorm didn't, you know, they didn't want any uh, orange or because it mainly also uh, they thought it looked too much like the Avatar, the uh, cartoon, uh, uh, the anima animated version. Uh, they have an orange logo, so um, no, it had to be too uh, or, uh, too blue or, uh, cabinet armor. So I think I was the one that came up with, hey, why don't we do the skin pattern? On the uh, on the CE armor, and do something else, then then and do something special, um, and then the idea got got re pretty uh, fast rejected. Like no, that's too expensive. But um, but then during a call, uh, it was brought up. Hey, can and can you show maybe the skin? And then Lightstorm loved it, so they 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 now we ended up with it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure how, uh, that Jack is happy with that. <laughs> I think it looks great. Um, so here again, first iterations for first sketches for the UI. Um, tried something completely different, uh, very organic because it's an organic. Uh, you know, the movie Pandora is an organic world, no straight lines, and and and, and so you try to do something different. Uh, no, no. Uh, is it symmetrical uh, UI uh, score offset to the side, a bit like we did on dialed in, and so you start uh, you know, putting in the rules. Uh, there's this, uh, uh, no, and then and then you do some. Uh, so these are the color palettes they they give you of the movies, and you try to apply that to your you know the, the titles you use on the on the screen, so it matches. Um, with the, with the movie, um, and don't yeah use any colors they don't that don't fit. Uh, so the the song chord is a is a major um, story. Well, it's 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 used in the in the second Avatar movie. And Keith Johnson, the programmer, he um, had this idea of these uh, song chords as your uh, modes. So uh, that's why we. Created uh, and started putting that in the UI. Uh, each each uh, beat on on the, on the song chord, each uh, yeah, sort of a, uh, what a beat is a like a, a so, so, so sort of memory na yeah, natural or uh, natural a uh, natural jewel sort of a, so oh yeah it's their it's their experience in, in in life. So each time something major happens, like uh, or uh, important happens, I should say, like uh, the birth of a child. They attach this new beat to their song chord, so the longer your life, the longer your song chord, etc., etc. <laughs> um, so the, the, those experiences are the modes and the scenes you play in the game. Um, so this is how we. So uh, I started using like full screen video clips. Uh, There's a first like sort of a setup to to show the. Uh, Lights on and Disney, what you are planning to do, and then they say, No, we don't want that, uh, like that, uh, their bonding uh, thing <laughs> in, the, in the UI. That's something, yeah, that we don't, we don't want that, take that out, so you, you don't use that anymore. And uh, you have to come up with other ideas, and then trying to find, so in, in, in that upper corner you have the, the multiple one progress and here is your multiple two progress, movie one, movie two, um, and trying to integrate the pinballs into that, they, 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 they allowed us to do that because um, they, they're also hesitant to, to uh, add pinball elements into the Pandora world or the, the Avatar world. Um, so it all has to be, yeah. They we, they they don't want to easily uh, ac accept anything that we come up with. Um, so the the these are the backgrounds. Before you play mode, I, I picked a, an interesting shot from that uh, movie scene that um, that I three D or no, parallax, parallax animated as sort of as a as a prelude. So, Know which mode you you are gonna play when you shoot uh, when you start a mode. Created um, there's 22 modes in this game, so there's 22 of these uh, uh, different animations. Then uh, qualifying a mode is by shooting different shots in the game. 
uh, each shot has its own uh, um, uh, name. That's what we work. So, so we came up with this idea to create uh, these tokens, wooden tokens. So the, the, a, a, a certain set of tokens will qualify for a certain mode. So each time you make shots, you will qualify different uh, modes. And so we came up with this like uh, tokens to to uh, and we presented these uh, to a light store and um, Olaf made this render with a, a lat, like a metal toy, and I said, well, maybe it should be wood. So we presented this, and then uh, I was so happy to hear that Lightstorm um, accepted, because this is like creating something new, and I explained, well, this could be toys that they maybe carved, and maybe they, they made for their kids to play with. And so Lightstorm said, well, we did something for that, not in the movie, but for their, like, an attraction or their uh, yeah. role. So they, they gave us like new assets where they actually <laughs> created what we, what, 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 we, what we were looking for, what we <laughs> thought out ourselves. And um, so some, some we could recreate and, um, and some we, we came up with ourselves. So Olaf made all these and um, look really nice, of course. Um, so happy to have you on board, uh, Olaf. Yeah, yeah, and I work from Amsterdam uh, in, a, in a studio, and I'm, I'm working there together also with uh, another uh, person. His, his name is Lars, and that's also good to name him because he's also working on those models, and um, so it's also there a collaborative uh, project. And uh, yeah, it was very nice to work on. Um, yeah, at that time you uh, you uh, asked me to help out with. Uh, more of the UI part, so the upper uh, left and the lower right corners, um, the, the all the, the wooden tokens and the beats to uh, you know to, to bring that a little bit further. Because at that point you were also working on the cabinet art, uh, helping that. Uh, there's a lot of th things to sort out. Uh, we're looking for footage, and you know. Uh, yeah. Making all the full screen animations. No, absolutely, and you, you, you just have less time to create, so we, we just need more people on it. Yeah. Uh, I know uh, Stern has a, a big team of yeah. people uh, creating uh, all the stuff for their games. Yeah. So when I was finishing with uh, finished with uh, done with Elton, I, I started yeah. helping you out. It was basically the yeah. the process. Yeah. So what we now it's, it's so now there's uh, like you do seventy five. And I 25 percent, yeah. and then the other way around on the other project. So it, can, it also keeps uh, the style the same. As so if you mix it too much, it can go. Yeah, yeah. You can start to see different styles. Yeah. Um, another idea was to to um, there, there's no real language or, or written script in the movies, um, but we did we did find this in the extended uh, movie, uh, or you find it actually online. Apparently, in, in one of the shots, there is this sort of an old school, Navi school where they try to learn Navi. Um, uh, and they came up with, uh, I, I found these, um, these uh, uh, symbols, and uh, we were allowed to use those in the game, um, in the uh, inserts, and, the, and they just light up when, uh, with the UV light. So it's sort of like uh, comparable to Monster Bash, where you shoot a shot uh, three times and it starts a shot mode. So um, uh, when you so you, when you make a first shot, you also see them on screen. So it sort of is a counter because they don't like uh, to use numbers in uh, Pandora because they don't know numbers. So but then how do you display a score? It's, it's uh, you know it can be a bit uh, uh, tricky. Then another interesting thing is this left hand combo thing. So uh, when you when you start this, uh, you can only make uh, you, you you can uh, you, the you. All the shots you make with your left hand will uh, add to the combo. Once you use the le right flipper, you you end your combo, and it will uh, you know and, uh, you will collect the the amount of uh, the, uh, the your jackpot that you build up. The reason why we have this left hand combo because apparently the Navi are all left handed instead of are all maybe like and humans mostly are right handed, and now we have this left handed combo. That's what the reason why. 
Maybe we should have put the plunger on the left hand as well. Yeah. Um, so we got a lot of assets from Lightstorm, original assets from the, from the movies, uh, which was great to work with, although they were pretty large in file size and yeah. all that, so you reduce that to... Yeah, they are working with their own um, programs and are, they have their own workflow, uh, but they provided us models and those are uh, models you re really need to take a look at and change a lot to make them um, uh, animatable again and look as uh, as as nice as in the in the movies. You need to you know to do the texturing uh, and all the things uh, uh, over. Um, but it's a great starting point. There's a lot of detail. There's a lot of uh, in the provided textures. There's a lot of uh, yeah you know it, it looks fantastic. Mm -hmm. So it's. It's amazing starting point to work from. Uh, yeah, and then uh, I worked on the, this multiple, um, the crap suit battle. <laughs> yeah, we also made a bunch of uh, arrows. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the uh, so uh, Olaf would uh, model these, render these for me. Uh, um, so it was uh, so I can use them in any way and uh, further in the game to, to for the multipliers. Um, you know, uh, give me, uh, and then he also animated this uh, wood sprite, which we then uh, render in different, uh, you know, sort of different movement and angles. So if you mix it up and uh, use it as a particle system, they all look uh, different. And also, if you do a time offset, then then it will look uh, pretty uh, pretty natural. So we ended up like here. You see them being used as a particle system, and uh, this is the one that all of. Uh, Created. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you actually use the AI to create the environment, right? Uh, yeah, true. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it, it, you know, there, you need to be um, also um, precise on how much time you spent on the thing. So, uh, you know, if you can use AI to create already the, the background, the far background, mm -hmm. uh, and it turned out really, uh, really nice. Uh, so, yeah. And then you add the parallax and the, the light effect. And, uh, yeah, this was another <laughs> example yeah. we made, but it was, uh, yeah, it's a, yeah, ejected, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the reason this was rejected, yes, they don't have these, <laughs> these yeah. wooden boards in, in their world. Uh, the Navi didn't create these uh, uh, things and, and they don't have the numbers. Yeah. So that was a reason to come up with a different match so it doesn't match with your end number of the of the score, but uh, the sprite will pick the player that you know uh, <coughs> gets a free game. Like in the game, or like in the movie, the sprites go to Jake and surround him as a selection. It's also funny when, when seeing it back after a while, you totally understand why they rejected it. <laughs> if I look at it now, no, but it was it's also a it is funny it, thing. It is, <laughs> it is also previous, you know. We, yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. sure. But I, maybe it's also to do with I just came from Elton, and then you're still in that, yeah. uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it, a theme that also needs to grow on you uh, more and more. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's always figuring out with yeah. each, each license which um, uh, what you can do with the license, yeah. what, a, what a licensor allows uh, you to do with it. So yeah, sometimes you just look for the boundaries and and, uh, and you sure. gotta accept if something uh, is. Oh, that's it. Okay, so <laughs> that's it. <laughs>